cars. It's one of the most powerful tools that can be wielded by digital painters, yet for some reason, I don't see enough of y'all using it. With curves, you can change the entire color makeup of a painting, so if you suck at coloring, which we all do sometimes, try these curve color adjustment tips. Oh, and later on, I'm going to show you some pretty gnarly effects to try out, so you better stick to the end. I triple dog dare you. Almost all painting programs nowadays has the curves tool in the adjustments tab. And if yours doesn't, bro, find a new program. I use Procreate, so you'll find curves when you click the wand looking thing. And boom, curves, two strokes down. <laughs> when you open up curves, you'll be met with the straight diagonal line in the gamma tab with the red, green, and blue tabs on the side. We'll get to the RGB later, but basically in the gamma tab, the right side of the graph contains the highlights. And since this image is dark, you can see that there's not a lot of action going on here. Sorta of like your love life. You can control the total brightness by moving the point up and down. And you can control the brightness threshold of a piece by moving left and right. And obviously vice versa for the shadows. Oh, but that's not all folks. You can add extra dots anywhere on this line to adjust the highlight, midtones, and shadows separately. Wow. Okay, so while you're on the gamma tab, you're only affecting the values, how light and dark things are. But if you use those three brain cells you got in your brain, you can probably figure out that when you switch over to one of the RGB tabs, you'll be changing the intensity of that specific color. One thing to keep in mind though is let's say you lower the curve on the highlights on the red tab, cyan starts to show up because cyan is the opposite of red. If you do the same thing on the blue tab, yellow starts to appear, and if you do it on the green tab, you'll get magenta. So basically, you can actually control six different color channels if you really think about it. Okay, now stop thinking about it. One thing to remember is that when you pull a point up and down on the graph, you'll be affecting the curve before and after that point. So you'll want to add some extra points as like an anchor, so only the things in between the anchor points get affected. Alrighty, that's basically the basics of the tool. Now let me show you how to apply that knowledge bomb you just inhaled. The most common use is to push and pull colors slightly in one direction or the other. Add a little bit of red here, add some blue there, but there are a lot more ways that you can manipulate the line. First, we got S-Curves, the classic. It makes the lights brighter and the darks darker. At the end of the painting, when you want a little extra punch to a piece, add an S-Curve. Solid. Next up are what I call flats. Areas where the slope of the line is zero, or M equals zero, or rise over run equals zero. Okay, I'll stop there. You get it. Basically, a flat line is causing that value range to come closer together. As you can see, if you make an entire image a flat line, you just get gray. Usually, you're going to want to avoid creating flats when editing a finished piece because you should already have a good value range, but in an uncompleted piece while you're still in the rendering process, this is a great line to create to clean up some muddiness and harmonize the piece. What you can do to a finished piece is to create some flats in the color channels, which will give you sort of like a harmonizing effect, like I did in this piece here. A curve you want to avoid, however, is the C that stands for shrimp shape that your back makes when you're bare bending over for hours on end when you're sitting down working on a painting. That's where flexi spot standing desk can come and save your back, and probably your neck too. That's right, we got a sponsor for this video. I was actually looking to buy a standing desk when flexi spot reached out and hooked me up with the EC5 classic standing desk. I got the bamboo white frame, but you can choose from a great range of sizes from a 48 inch to a giganormous 72 inch desktop. That's a bloody shelf right there if you need it. You can also customize the desk color and frame separately so you can trick it out exactly how you want it. I'm usually a caveman when it comes to building stuff, but building this desk was really easy and it made me feel like Bob the Builder, okay? As I said before, having a standing desk prevents you from turning into a shrimp, saving your back and neck. So when you get uncomfortable from sitting for a long time, with the press of a button, you can really just stop sitting and start standing. And FlexiSpot makes it incredibly easy because their EC5 has the usual up and down buttons, but they also got three preset slots you can set the exact desk height for. Like bro, they got the exact inchage with LEDs, dog. I got carpet floors, but I was still surprised to see how sturdy the desk was, even at like 50 inches off the ground. Having a standing desk is honestly a game changer, and I just feel better when I paint standing up. So if you want to grab yourself a flexi spot standing desk, I got some links in the description you can check out that also help support me. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this beautiful desk and this part of the video. Next up are downhill runs, point where the line is trending downwards or the slope is negative. <laughs> Yo damn, I really be using some of the random school maths in real life. That's crazy. Anyways, like doing real life downhill runs, a downhill run in curves is fun but very dangerous. You're basically inversing the direction of the line and your shadows become the highlights and your highlights become shadows, which is uh, no good. Usually, these are what you want to avoid. I mean, just look at this. 
but if you limit the curve in very small sections, you can get away with downhill runs and create some pretty gnarly effects. In this piece, I used a downhill run to give the plastic wrap this cool holographic look. I'd rate it a very gnarly out of 10. Rostraz also used downhill runs to create a sort of psychedelic effect on his pieces, and <laughs> yeah, his graph starts to look kinda mad, but his final result still looks pretty clean. Okay, those are basically all the basic lines you should know about, and now that I've dissected the curves graph, let's talk about some specific effects you can pull off with curves. The first effect is actually more like a trick, a big brain play of sorts. Go to the selection tool and switch over to automatic, and tap the colors you want to select. If you drag your pen left and right, you can actually control the sensitivity of your selection. The reason to use automatic is because the selection tool creates some really unique shapes that I could have never come up with, and it provides some extra interest. The smoother the surface, the wilder the selection gets, as you can see here. But um, yeah, it doesn't really work on the face, because uh, I got her looking like a... Uh, I don't even know, man, I'm stumped. Next effect. For this next effect, we're going to create like a psychedelic look by making our graph look very, very wiggly. Remember, to do this effectively, you want to create some downhill runs in very small pockets of the graph and not over a large area. Once you got it into a state looking something like this, you're going to want to turn the layer style into color mode. Oh, it vanished. But don't worry, buckaroo, it's part of the plan. What I deviously failed to mention is make sure you have another painting finished and put that finished painting underneath the color layer. Now just erase the bits you don't want from the psychedelic color layer and boom, you got some free color variation and spice. Next effect. When you pair using a flat with one of the color channels, you get a pretty cool effect. This painting is mostly in the red slash warm tones, so I created my flat in the red channel. You can experiment with other color channels too, but I found that you start to lose a little bit of control when you start adding extra effects. Basically, stop trying to do too much. Hey, but if you're good enough, you can probably get away with it. Anyways, if you want to add a bit of harmony to your piece, duplicate the layer with the stuff you want to affect, and add your flat. Then select the layer style to luminosity and boom! I think that this piece is a little bit more harmonious with them colors. Next effect. Okay, sorry everyone, but for this effect, you'll specifically need a program that has a pencil tool and the curves adjustment. So I'm going to transfer over to Photoshop to get this effect. So once I have my image in Photoshop, I'm going to go over to the image, adjustment, and curves. You're going to want to switch over from the line looking thingy over to the pencil icon. And then you'll just want to start drawing some horizontal lines. This effect is called posterization. Photoshop has an auto posterize filter, but with curves you just get way more control. Again, you can decide where and how much you want to posterize. Then you can also decrease the layer opacity and erase the bits you don't want. Or if you're a madman, you can just absolutely go nuts. <laughs> um, yeah, another pretty gnarly out of 10. Final effect. Okay, this final effect is more like a segue into talking about how you can use curves in combination with other tools such as layer styles to create the gnarliest of gnarly effects. If erasing the bits of curves you don't want is addition, using curves with layer styles is like multiplication. I'll use this final effect as an example. Start by duplicating your final image. Open up curves and create a W looking curve in the red channel and then in the blue channel. Then you want to change the layer style and as you can see, I was still sifting through what kind of effects I could get. Luminosity looked pretty cool, and hard mix too. I eventually landed on soft light and started removing the bits I didn't want. Boom, pretty cool color change. Okay, but then I decided I'm gonna switch over to layer style to pin light. Did some more racing, and then I applied the Gaussian blur to get another sick effect. And that's what I'm talking about when I tell you that combining different effects together is like multiplication. It's literally just up to you how jiggy you wanna get with it. Alright, we're near the end of the video, and if you notice, there was a speed paint running alongside the entire video. A lot of that was to keep your Neanderthal brains engaged, but also to show you how I use curves in one of my pieces in real time. <laughs> well, not real time, but you know, not in a presentation format. Well, to do a recap, I used curves throughout the piece to do small adjustments, but there were a couple of pretty impactful adjustments here and there as well. The sheet in the back got a nice little burst of pink, the face got brightened up hella here, and one of the biggest color adjustments was midway through when I drastically changed the color makeup of the background. It went from this to this. So yeah, it just goes to show you, if you suck at colors, use curves. It'll help fix your color mistakes and it'll help you give your final piece a little bit more harmonized look. Alright, that's all the time I got. If you enjoyed the vid, go subscribe you silly dog. And uh, also go watch another one of my vids. I'm not asking by the way. Anyways, time to give me your forehead.